So I've been asked several times, where do we sell our products that we make in the shop using our CNC and laser machines? The answer is, well, it depends. Today I'm going to pull back the curtain and show you our approach that I think will help you sell more. I see many folks get a CNC or laser without a plan as to what they want to create or how they're going to sell it. Now there are a lot of folks that use machines to embellish a product they're already making. You know, like a custom logo, family crest, or other saying that means something on a cutting board or a sign or those kinds of things. But for the most part, it's a way to create a line of products. But how do you sell them? You're going to run out of friends and family that will buy your stuff pretty quick. And you're going to need a customer base if you produce very much stuff in your shop. You're going to need to also research what is actually selling. Products seem to follow fads or trends. Much of those start on Pinterest, Etsy, or Instagram. So if you're needing ideas on what kind of products to make, those are great places to go and research. So where do you sell your products? So let's start out with the one most folks probably know, Etsy. It's probably the best known for craft items that sell online. They've got a huge following of people. I get local customers all the time emailing me screenshots asking if I can make something they saw on Etsy. Etsy has a ton of competition though, and sometimes it drives the price down on similar items you might be selling. Etsy costs 20 cents per each item you list, which lasts four months, but then it will auto renew, but you'll pay another 20 cents for each item you're listing. There's a transaction fee of 6.5% of the price you display for each listing. Etsy ads are a great way to get your products to the top, but you're gonna bid on that ad placement and it's gonna vary. Off-site Etsy fees through their Etsy partners like social networks and search engines, for that you're gonna pay 12 to 15% for any orders attributed to those outside sources. So it's not cheap, but the audience is there. Oftentimes things become a commodity on Etsy though, so we don't use it, but we felt it was worth mentioning in this video because sometimes it's the best for some makers. eBay is another well-known online venue. I don't feel it's the right solution for handcrafted items, although some may find some success here. Their fees are 30 cents per listing and anywhere from 3 to 15% transaction fees depending on the category you list in. While I feel it's a great place to buy and sell tools, it isn't a good fit for our products, so I don't use it. Kickstarter is another online venue that can be a great place to sell products if they're unique enough. It can be a lot of work to set up, but in a nutshell, you can list pictures and video of the product you want to make and have folks pledge to buy them. After the campaign finishes, anywhere from two weeks to 30 days, then Kickstarter collects the money and sends it to you. That allows you to then start making and shipping product. This is cool because you know exactly how many you're going to sell and you have the money up front for materials. Kickstarter charges 5% of the total sales plus processing fees of 3% and 20 cents per pledge. We have done three campaigns with our Dice Tower products geared towards strategy gamers like Dungeons & Dragons, Warhammer, and others. Two of the three were successful. I'll leave links in the description below if you want to go out and see those. Now while those sites we've talked about have what seems to be high fees, remember taking credit cards can be a large part of that. You can ballpark average credit card processing is going to be around 3%. We use Square and it runs 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. We actually use our own website so we can control our destiny. Plus I build websites for a living. You can get your own site for 20 to $30 a month and list as many things as you want with no additional cost. We use Square to process our online payments so each item is 2.9% plus 30 cents. The downside is we don't get as many eyeballs as you might on Etsy, but we focus more on local customers and we post on Facebook to drive people to our website. Probably one of the best and cheapest methods for us online to market our stuff is Facebook. We have a diesel local following for our business page and belong to several local buy sell groups. So we will post a product and send them to our business website with a link or they can contact us and we work with them offline. That method only costs our time, which is worth something, but no outlay of cash. Of course, we're still going to be paying processing fees if they throw down a credit card. So let's compare the cost between these platforms. I'm going to take a $30 item that we would sell and kind of see how that equates out to fees and such on each platform. So on Etsy, it's 20 cents to list, 6.5%, and let's say 12% promotion fees. So we're at 18.5% plus 20 cents. 
a $30 item would cost us $5.75 in fees. eBay, 30 cents to list, 3 to 15%. Um, we're going to average 8%, so we would be looking at $2.40 plus 30 cents or $2.70 to sell a $30 item. Kickstarter is zero cost up front to list, but it's really only good for a single or a group of related products. It's going to be 8% or $2.40 plus 20 cents per transaction for a total of $2.60 per item. On our own website, it will cost us 2.9% and 30 cents per transaction for the square processing fees, which is a total of $1.17. But remember, you're also paying 20 to $30 a month to host your own website. So if you got a high volume of items that you're selling, it would be a lot cheaper than any other platform. If you don't sell anything, you still have those costs every month. So that's kind of the difference. And lastly, Facebook Marketplace and buy sell groups. Those literally cost you $0 other than your time. And of course, if somebody throws a credit card down and you're selling it that way, you're going to pay processing fees. But there's no cost to actually getting the items out there. And a lot of times that's a great way to drive other business to your website and to your business Facebook page. So you have to figure out the best way to market online and how to reach your customer base. We've done a variety of craft shows and local farmers markets over the past three years and have done well at those. Oftentimes we get more custom orders than selling the products we actually take, which is good too. We've also sold out some days at the farmers market. Product selection is going to be the key for your local area if you're doing the local shows and markets. I'm in central Missouri, which is a rural farming community. I do well with circuitry boards, cutting boards, coasters, and patio signs at the farmer's market. The dice towers and off the wall stuff don't sell as well here, so I push those online. But the other thing we do is we tell a story. People can buy Chinese made products far cheaper than what you're going to produce, but many appreciate handcrafted items, especially if there's a story behind it. Or in our case, we buy reclaimed sunken mahogany from the rivers of Belize that are over 200 years old. We tell that story through video, photos, and in person when we're visiting with customers. That adds value to what we're making, and people enjoy the story. So the top things that I really feel like will help you be more successful is, number one, find the products that you enjoy making. They need to be unique, but if you enjoy doing what you're doing, that'll come across when you're selling them. Finding the right price point for your area. Going online and asking what everybody's charging for something doesn't really help you unless they're selling in your area because it's different all over the country. Find the right ways to reach your customer base. It's going to take more than one avenue to do that, so you're going to have to figure that out for your market. Wow them with your customer service and deliver stuff on time. Nothing's worse than someone having a bad experience because you're late delivering, it was a gift, or it was for Christmas, so you have to be on time with your delivery. Under promise and over deliver. These five items are going to ensure repeat business from some very loyal local customers. So all those things I feel are really important and it is, it's paid dividends for us over time. Drop us a comment below and let us know where you found some success selling products. We'd sure appreciate a like if you found this helpful and we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel. All those things help us in our maker and YouTube journey. Until next time, get out in the shop and make something cool. Talk to you soon. Thanks.